Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the connection between interest rates and the foreign exchange market graphs. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your AP Microeconomics or Macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. Now this video focuses on foreign investment. Now up until this unit, investment has always meant purchases of physical capital by businesses. And of course, the interest rate has always determined how much physical capital businesses buy. At higher interest rates, there's lower gross investment. And at lower interest rates, there's higher gross investment. Now in this unit, foreign investment means something completely different. Now in this unit, Foreign investors are actually savers in our loanable funds markets. They purchase interest-bearing assets and save their money in U.S. banks. That means foreign investors are going to be seeking high interest rates and they are going to abandon low interest rates. Their financial capital flows to places where it can earn the highest interest rate. That means when a country has high interest rates, they are going to see a net capital inflow. Foreign investors will put their money in those countries' banks earning that higher interest rate. And when a country has low interest rates, it is going to see a capital outflow. Foreign investors are going to sell those interest bearing assets as they seek higher interest rates elsewhere. And now we're going to talk about how monetary policy can impact the interest rates. And with that, they will impact where foreign investors put their financial assets. That impacts capital inflows and outflows and with it, the exchange rates. So if we see expansionary monetary policy, as you already know, that is going to cause a decrease in the interest rate. Since the interest rate is lower, that will result as a financial capital outflow. Foreign investors will seek higher interest rates elsewhere. And if we see contractionary monetary policy, the decrease in the money supply will cause an increase in interest rates in that money market graph. And that will result in a capital inflow as foreign investors seek those higher interest rates. So now we're going to see how those changes in the interest rate from the Federal Reserve's actions would impact the exchange rate for the US dollar and the Mexican peso. If we see low interest rates in the United States, perhaps caused by expansionary monetary policy, which increases the money supply, driving down the interest rate in the money market graph, that means Mexico will see a financial capital inflow as foreign investors seek the higher interest rates or the unchanged interest rates in Mexico, and the United States will see a financial capital outflow as foreign investors abandon the low interest assets in the United States. So here we see a market for US dollars. I have the quantity of US dollars on that X axis and the price of US dollars in Mexican pesos on that Y axis. We see a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve with the equilibrium quantity marked as well as the equilibrium exchange rate marked labeled PE there. Since foreign investors are going to be selling US assets as they try to buy foreign assets, that will mean we will see an increase in the supply of US dollars as those foreign investors sell their US dollars. At the same time, we will see a decrease in the demand for US dollars because foreign investors will be less likely to start buying US assets as a result of the decrease in the interest rate. Both of those shifts will cause the currency to depreciate as the exchange rate falls on that Y axis. And as you may have learned in the last video, the depreciation will cause exports to increase and imports to decrease. If we now take a look at the impact on the Mexican peso market, here we have the quantity of pesos on that X axis and the price of pesos in US dollars on the Y axis there. Mexico's financial capital inflow will mean we see an increase in the demand for Mexican pesos and Foreign investors who already have pesos will be less likely to sell them as they can already get higher interest rates in Mexico. So we will see a decrease in the supply of Mexican pesos as well. Both of those shifts cause the exchange rate to increase, meaning that the Mexican peso has appreciated. If on the other hand, we saw an increase in the interest rate in the United States, perhaps from contractionary monetary policy, which decreases the supply in the money market, that would cause a financial capital outflow from Mexico as foreign investors seek the higher interest rates within the United States. For the United States, we would see a net financial capital inflow and on the foreign exchange market for the US dollar, since foreign investors are going to be seeking those high interest rates in the United States, that means they are going to demand higher quantities of US dollars and foreign investors with US dollars will be less likely to sell them. That decreases the supply of US dollars as well. And both of those shifts cause the US dollar to appreciate. And of course, that appreciation will cause exports in the United States to decrease and imports 
to increase, as you may have learned in the last video. And on the flip side, for the foreign exchange market for the Mexican peso, we are going to see an increase in the supply of Mexican pesos as foreign investors will sell Mexican interest-bearing assets, and we will see a decrease in the demand for Mexican pesos as foreign investors will be less likely to buy Mexican assets. Both of those shifts are going to cause that equilibrium interest rate to fall, and that means the Mexican peso has depreciated. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at the impact of those capital inflows and capital outflows on the loanable funds market graph. First, we're going to take a look at the impact of a financial capital inflow. Here's our loanable funds market graph. Here we have the quantity of loanable funds on that x-axis and the real interest rate on the y-axis. We have an upward sloping supply curve and a downward sloping demand curve. Well, if we see an inflow of financial capital, that is going to show up on the supply curve. So if a country has an inflow of financial capital, that will show as a increase in the supply and that causes the real interest rate in that country to decrease. And on the balance of payments, that will show up as an increase in the capital and financial account balance. If on the other hand, a country has a financial capital outflow on the loanable funds market graph, we are going to see a decrease in the supply of loanable funds. So that causes the real interest rate to go up as a result of that financial capital outflow, that will show up as a decrease in the capital and financial account within the balance of payments. And there you have it. If you already knew all of that, you are on your way to acing your next AP macroeconomics exam. If you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your AP microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's all for now. I'll see you all next time.